We are six days away from what for centuries has been a peaceful transition of power. Yet our democracy has never been in greater danger. Instead of enjoying and celebrating this time-honored, sacred, and hallowed tradition where the torch is passed to a new, democratically elected president of the greatest nation on earth, we are mired down in the politics of division, fake news, and hate-fueled resistance to the 45th president of the United States. Shame on us. This week, a United States congressman, with no doubt a stellar record in the civil rights movement, John Lewis, said he would not attend the inauguration, adding this. It's going to be very difficult. Uh, I don't see this president-elect as a legitimate president. Not legitimate? Pray tell, Congressman Lewis, what's not legitimate? Donald Trump won by a large electoral college margin. And in spite of efforts to do a recount, which backfired big time, and efforts to influence those faithless electors, nothing changed. Congressman, you have devoted your life to equal rights and equal justice for all. You have been rewarded with a seat in America's most exalted House of Representatives. Likewise, Donald Trump has been rewarded with a seat in America's White House. Are you not a part of our democracy? Do you not want a peaceful transition of power? Did you not take an oath to support the Constitution, including Article II that created the Electoral College? You, a congressman for 30 years, know how to amend the Constitution if you don't like it. No one has a promise with your voicing your First Amendment rights. But you and your party, those purveyors of the peaceful transition of power, so concerned that the Republicans wouldn't be, are daily proving yourselves to be hypocrites. And another Democrat, Congresswoman Maxine Waters, proudly asserts her refusal to meet the man who will sit in the Oval Office. Where's equal rights and inclusion? Where's doing your job for the people who elected you? And as for those liberal Hollywood leftists in need of a lobotomy like Rosie O'Donnell, they are straight up communists. Rosie supports imposing martial law, delaying the inauguration until Trump is cleared of all charges. Rosie. I know you. I don't have a problem with you. But martial law? Are you nuts? Do you even know what martial law is? It's when the military takes over when we're invaded and we're at war. And by the way, Trump isn't charged with anything. And for him to be cleared, there'd have to be a trial. Ain't no trials happening, Rosie, during martial law. And on a personal level, Rosie, you would hate it. There would be curfews and checkpoints. There'd be tanks in the streets. And no, you couldn't call an Uber tank for a quick latte at your local Starbucks. Your tweet is stupid. Since when does the left want the military to take over? And a little primer, Rosie, when they do, People like you, who call for the overthrow of the president, meet a firing squad. And it ain't a happy ending. And while we're at it, Rosie, what you said about Baron Trump, a 10-year-old kid who amazingly was still standing at 3 a.m. when his father won the presidency, was as classless and rude as it gets. And to then claim he's not off limits? And you call Trump mentally unstable? Rosie, since when are you the bastion of brilliant behavior? Why don't you put on your big girl pants and come to grips with the fact that Donald Trump is your next president and you're either with America or against America? If you don't like him, campaign harder next time. 
and let this be a wake-up call to you and your Hollywood friends that you don't speak for America. And by the way, isn't Hollywood supposed to be inclusive and accepting of the views of people who don't look or talk or act like them? And newsflash, and this isn't fake news, the people in middle America, some of whom ride a tractor for a living, wear the same boots every day, wear a badge, go overseas, not knowing if they'll come home, are sick and tired of your nonsense. You know the silent and forgotten men and women of America who rose up against you bozos and your candidate. It's about time you accepted them and respected them for their hard work, sacrifice, and yes, even their investment in your movies, TV shows, and records. From the liberal DC politicians to the liberals in Hollywood, my message, actually America's message, is the same. You lost, we won. Swallow your pride, get in line, stop thinking you're so damn important that the world has to stop and listen to your revolutionary nonsense. Your candidate just didn't cut the mustard. Donald J. Trump is the president for the next four years. Deal with it.